Hello, YouTubers, my fellow Refram, what's going on? March here, Fragbox TV. Hello, Mr. Diggs, what are we talking about today? We just got a phone call from a customer. This is what inspired today's video. This is a phone call we get in the store quite often. I would say a few times a day, if I'm being um, conservative with that estimate, but the question was, what's wrong with my corals? That's a question, an email we get in the store a lot, a lot of times. And that's a really, um, kind of difficult question to answer. There's a lot going on with that question. Why don't my zoos open? Why isn't my hammer looking good? Why is my hammer dying? Why is my torch closing? Why has my ACAN melted? These are questions we get all day, every day for the past, I don't know, as long as we're do we've been doing this. And we always try and help customers to figure out what's going on with the aquarium, what's going on with the corals, but there's so much in that question and we kind of go through this process of elimination. So maybe you're watching this video because you like our channel and you've already subscribed and you like listening to the shit we have to talk about or maybe you're going through issues with one of your corals. But basically, we kind of go through this mental checklist of things to look at and number one thing we always ask is what is your salt? And I can't tell you how many times people think that their salt is okay and it's out of whack. It's a very basic measurement. Uh, we're keeping salt water tanks so salt is really important. What we always recommend to test your salt with, and I've done videos on this in the past because I can't stress it enough, this is my favorite and by far, I think, the best way to measure your salt and the best, so it's a refractometer if you're not, um, if you don't know what that is, it just measures your salt water by refracting the light. And I love, love this brand here, Cybon. This is the same one that we use in the store to test this tank, to test that new system that's coming. Um, this system here, that one, every single system in the store, we're trusting to that Cybon being correct. That's number one. Check your salt. If you're using a hydrometer, you can, uh, they're not great. You know what? They're, they're budget friendly. They're good to get in the hobby. Go ahead and upgrade to a refractometer. Cross that off your checklist. Make sure that it's calibrated. That's step number one because I don't know how many times I, I tell you like people think their salt's okay and it's not and the next video I'm going to do is going to talk about how I killed this torch over here and some others. Very, very basic setup. If you're confident that your salt is good, you start to look at other things. So how is the temperature? Stick your finger in and check it. You know, just because um, you have a heater doesn't mean that it's working. Check the temperature. Make sure that you're somewhere between 76 to 79 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm not sure what that is in Celsius. Those two are good. You just begin to kind of go down the, the checklist. So I'll ask people, you know, depending on the coral, um, have you added anything new? Is it possible that it's a pest? There are certain pests that eat specific corals. Uh, zoanthids, for example, are notorious for having pests because there are three or four that will eat zoa. So there's a zoa eating nudie branch and there's a sundial snail. There's a uh, sort of crab, a spider crab that eats them. So is it possible that you've introduced a pest? As is a coral, was a coral happy in your tank from day one? Or is there a sudden decline in health? Maybe the coral wasn't healthy even to begin with. Where'd you buy the coral? Did you dip it? So these are all the kind of the questions we run through. And if you ever need help with stuff like that, feel free to call the store. We love answering these kind of questions and we kind of help you diagnose. Um, do you have any angelfish in the tank? They are, in my experience, not the best candidates for a reef tank or a mixed reef. Have you added any new fish, any new invertebrates? I've had um, crabs go rogue. I've had tangs go rogue. I had a powder blue that just took a liking one day to Zoas. So, shrimp, too. shrimp, absolutely. Uh, sometimes cleanup crew that are 99 out of 100 times safe, you get one loser shrimp that decides, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to eat these corals. So sit back if you like beer crack open a cold one and sit in front of your tank for 20 minutes and really watch it to kind of rule out that it's not a fish and it's not a crab and it's not a pest or if you don't drink beer sorry i'm assuming that you like beer you can also yeah you, uh go make a coffee or tea just really spend time with the aquarium in front of it monitor that coral and make sure that it's not one of the tank inhabitants that are causing it ill harm the other thing you can do is check at night with a flashlight. So you could have maybe introduced some sort of pest. I don't know if you dip your corals before adding to them tank. We always recommend dipping your corals. It's a really good practice to get into early on. So in the past, I've actually introduced a bobbit worm. It's one of the earliest videos I've ever uploaded on to um, YouTube. You can go back, I think it's like seven, eight years ago. 
the thing was over a foot long. Uh, I don't know how it got in there, probably in the, the skeleton of a coral. So check at night with a flashlight. You may have something at night that you wouldn't regularly see during the day that's bothering or eating your coral. So these are kind of the things we start to look at. So now you know, okay, let's say your salt's good, you're confident in the salt, the temperature's fine, it's, there, it's not a pest that's eating it. What else could be causing? So depending on the coral that's upset, I would recommend you to look at a certain parameter. If it's hard coral, my mind immediately jumps to what? What does it jump to? Hard coral suffering? Uh, I wasn't listening. Oh, okay. I thought, they were li <laughs> I thought you guys were listening to my rant. No. If it's hard coral or SPS, first thing my mind jumps to is alkalinity. That's going to be the first one I look at. If you're suffering with LPS corals, that's euphilia, hammers, torches, frog spawns, acans, trumpets, pipe organs, all that fun stuff. Okay, maybe not pipe organ, but I would look at magnesium. This is quite important for LPS corals. If it's soft corals that are struggling, I'm going to look at nitrate. You tank may be too clean. Or I'm going to look at phosphate. Again, for hard coral, I'd be looking at phosphate and nitrate. Alkalinity is the first one I'm looking at. You're not really looking at your nitrite or ammonia after you've cycled the tank. And then there's some other more refined and uh, advanced test kits, silicate, strontium, your uh, iodine, stuff like that. pH also important, but I find it's not one of the big killers of, of corals. In my experience, pH kind of more controls the growth of corals. But again, look at it. So start to kind of rule things one by one. And then from that checklist of testing, usually you're going to find one that's out of whack. If you go and test everything, your alk is good, your calcium, your mag, your nitrate, phosphate, salinity, temperature, your tank is just rocking on all the parameters. There's absolutely nothing that you can see that's wrong. Go ahead and do one of these. This is an ICP test. This is my kind of my last resort when I'm stuck and I can't figure out what the heck's going on. You take your water, you send it off to these guys, icpanalysis.com, and they're going to give you a 40 point feedback of all these crazy tests, things that you can't see, heavy metals, aluminum, copper, zinc, uh, potassium, stuff that you normally wouldn't be able to test for or that a hobby grade test kit isn't good enough to pick up on. So that's a great tool. And many times I've sent off water or I've seen customers send off water, get their test res uh, results back and oh my God, wow, how, where did I get this? Uh, I'm getting copper, I'm getting aluminum or something, uh, high silicates, just weird values that you would never expect to be high and then because you did that test kit you, you see that if you do that and you know i've even had times where that's right and you're still having problems with the tank then you know then it's a different story then call me then then we can talk then this requires more than a uh, 10 minute uh, youtube video rant about testing your water but that's really going to be the key so a lot of people will call us and say hey uh, this coral is not doing well, why, why is it suffering? Well, I'm going to ask you all those questions, expecting that you've done some sort of testing because that's probably the most important and easiest way to kind of get down to what exactly is going on with the coral. When was the last time you changed your carbon? Um, are you running Roafoss? What kind of salt do you use? You know, that's, I've seen people switch salts and that can cause a lot of problems with tanks and corals. That's something we never recommend doing. Once you have your tank running, try and do less. Try and not change things. You're using one salt, don't change salts based on what's uh, on sale that week. And I know some people do, and I'm gonna get some thumbs down on this video like we get on every video because what I'm saying may not be agreeable to the way you keep a reef tank, which is cool. You do it, whatever works for you, that's the way you should do it. Everyone's reef tank is different. If you find one, that looks good, um, try and imitate someone else's reef tank. That's, that's usually works well, kind of try and copy them. And even then, it may not turn out exactly the way you expect. But corals in general, I think at least they're quite easy to take care of. I think I'm gonna do another video actually. This just inspired me. How hard is it to keep a nano reef? So corals generally easy in a bigger tank. Sometimes in a smaller tank like this, there's more work involved, but yeah, I think that's about it for today's video. If you guys got any questions, I'm expecting a lot of comments. Let me hear some stuff down below. What do you think? But that's about it for today's video. I'm going to leave our email address. If you're having any trouble with coral, uh, you know that if you email us, we're going to respond. So hit us up. That's the best way to get your questions answered is through email. We can't always go through all the YouTube comments just because there's sometimes 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 every single day. We do our best to respond to everyone. But I think that's about it for this one. Email's going to come at the end. Go ahead and subscribe if you like the channel. This is today's episode of Fragbox TV. And thanks for watching.